Man, we are into them here. Hello, this is David with Dave Fish 84. Welcome to another episode. Here we are into them again. I'm just overwhelmed with how good the fishing has been here in Eastern North Carolina. For if you don't know who I am here, David at Dave Fish 84, I'm from upstate New York where I fished for everything that swam for the last 30 years. I've also spent a fair amount of time in China, Thailand, and Southeast Asia fishing, as well as South America and Central America. All that said, I'm coming to you with a lot of experience. This is only my second time targeting trout from a kayak in Eastern North Carolina. We absolutely killed it again. I'm using soft plastic mirror lures. I hope you learn this because this is from last year between January and February, about the same time we're in right now. The trout are stacked. I'm seeing the same pattern. I've been out for the last couple weeks. They're in there, high quality. So stay tuned, there is a lot to learn from this video right here, I can promise you that. Depth and look for fish. Oh, there is somebody fishing my spot right now, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. Good thing as in, I'm sure there's fish here, bad thing as two boats. Bad thing as in, I don't want to crowd other people, you know? So I'm just kind of, oh, there's a fish. There's a fish. All right. That didn't take long. That's good. Keeper. All right. Good deal. Look at that. Woohoo. All right. So, fish are here. And that one there is a good size keeper. Let's see. Thing, eat it like you wanted it. That's dinner. Din din. All right. This one really, really grabbed it. So, goodness gracious. Ouch. I know it's a keeper, but I want to see what I'm working with here. All right, quick. <clears throat> Oh, 17. Nice. Let's go right back out there and do that again. All right. All right, let's do that again, y'all. People are fishing the snot out of the spot. Funny, every day's different. Last time I came here, I was the only one fishing here. I come here today and there's boats everywhere 100% strike there he is Got him. nice look at that another keeper nice fish all right Yep, they are biting. That's awesome. Look at that. Yep. About the same size. I'll also go back down this channel and see if I can pick up another one here. Let's see. Do 
appear to be here. So pretty back here. All right, oh, there's a fish. Man, they are in here. They're in here real good, look at that. Nice fish here. Again, they're all about the same size, I believe. Oh, he's, oh, that's an even better one there, much better one. Holy cow, guys, that's a nice one. He was thrashed on the top so bad, I didn't realize how big he was. That's a solid 19, 20 inch trout right there. What? Guys, this is crazy. That's a beauty, look at the size of that. The last one I keep right here. The rest I'm letting go, but that is an awesome trout. Look at that. Man. Okay, it is on fire right now. Look at that trout. Man, we are into them here. So I hadn't been here fishing 15 minutes. I already got three. And another solid 19 and three quarter inch pushing 20 inch. Yeah, it's it's hot. I'm not keeping any more. I got enough for the freezer. The rest is just fun catch and release from this point on. So, um, seriously, this is awesome. I want to share with you quickly what I'm using in this video. I am using a seven foot me, uh, moderate medium action rod. Really sensitive and great for this kind of jigging with soft plastics like we're doing in this video. Matched up with a 3500 reel from Academy Sports for the price. This has been really awesome. I also have 20 pound uh, Power Pro braided line matched up with 20 pound Yodzuri fluorocarbon line. That, that fluorocarbon is key as in it's the most invisible line you're going to be able to use out there which is great when the fish are pressured and it's good abrasion resistance. These trout with those teeth you know they, they shake their head on the surface a lot to try to shake the lure. You know, if your line's not abrasion resistance enough or if it's like 10 pound test I've lost some fish I bumped it up to 20 and I haven't had any breakoffs on fish with this yet. And importantly here is this five inch mirror lure, uh, soft plastic mirror lure in the molten color has been money for me all last season and this season. I've used other lures, but this one here has been the most consistent for me. And it's important for you to understand in the different waters that you are, when I'm closer to the ocean, the water's more clear, I might switch it up to a more translucent color, a brighter color, you want to experiment, but in this brackish water, I'm finding this molten, molten color, molting color, and some of the even darker colors than this have been the hot ticket. And I've been using this on a one fourth to eighth ounce jig head. I like these H and R jig heads, um, H and R lure company, because a lot of times these these jig heads anymore are so expensive. It'd be like seven bucks for three jig heads, but this this right here was between three and four bucks. It comes with a lot more than three. And these are good quality jig heads. I've been using these for years. I like the long shank hook on it that kind of comes out in the lure more. I feel like I get really good hookups with these. I, I just really liked these. I don't, I'm not sponsored by anyone right now. I'm just telling you the, the things that work for me. There's a number of different things that I use, but with jig heads, I've tried the expensive ones. They work great. But the, the H and R Lure Company jig heads uh, are really, really, really solid choice. So. Yeah, try out one of these mirror lures. Um, I know a lot of people like using the hard plastic mirror lures. They're probably the most popular, but these soft plastic ones, I've actually outfished a lot of people on the water with this technique right here. <laughs> actually watching this boat ahead of me for quite a while because they were catching a lot of fish and eventually I noticed they just stopped catching fish and then they drove off so what you're gonna see is I kind of move into this spot and give it a give it a try 
unfortunately I, I, I lost the first part of this clip to a hard drive uh, issue. I actually caught four fish in four casts right from the first cast in there. You're gonna see the second two fish here. The big takeaway here is that when you're into a mess of fish and it just shuts off, that's when you need to change approaches. Change your lure, change your presentation, change the angle that you're casting into the spot, your speeds. Don't leave, keep trying, just switch it up a little bit. Stopped catching fish, thinking the fishing was done, but there's still a lot of fish there. They just need to change up their presentation. Look at that. Another little baby rock. So that's my, that's what I learned right there. You get into a good fish, and then it stops. Switch your lure up. Keep switching it up until you figure it out, because clearly they're still here. That's four cast, four fish. Four cast, four fish. <laughs> this is this is awesome. Okay, he got off. That was another rock. Okay, four four cast, four fish. Let's see if we can do it again. Okay, back up. I need to get getting too close to the spot here. All right, so. Actually, the bite turned off with that lure. I took several more casts with the mirror lure and nothing. It's similar to the other guys. They were into fish and apparently the bite shut off and they left. So what I decided to do is just switch things up. I changed lures and got hit right away again. Get this on, I'm gonna try that popping cork out. That voodoo shrimp. Here comes another boat. Just think, oh, that's a fish. See, I switched it up, that feels like a, oh man, that was a really good fish too. Well, I fished a little longer. Uh, honestly, I only had an hour to fish. I had to rush out of there for another obligation, but wow, for just an hour of fishing, that was incredible. Just like the last trip, it doesn't always work out that way. I've learned that last and first hour are usually best, and if I could have stayed and continued to fish like that, I'm sure it would have been great. The big takeaway was switching up presentations when that bite stopped. I would have loved to put more time into that. But again, it was a short trip. Look, I know we have all have our favorite recipes, fried fish, barbecued fish, the way we've always done it. Maybe baked in the oven with some lemon and pepper and butter or something like that. But I'm here to show you something really unique and different. Look, if you don't know this or not, I've spent much of my life traveling the world, most of it in China. Right now, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite recipes. This is from Southeast China and Guangdong province. Absolutely awesome. I happen to have the this really nice steamer made out of bamboo you don't need this but you need to be able to steam this fish for this recipe take the noodles pretty simple i'm going to take two packs and do exactly what i'm doing here we're just going to let that boil As you can see here, I'm basically just chopping up the green onions. This is the bed. Not the white parts, but the green parts are the bed for this fish to be steamed on. If you have ginger, you want to cut that really thin, put that on the bed for this fish just like the green onions, but also put a layer on the top as you steam it. It's going to make the flavor so much better. Take the top off. Oh my gosh, that looks awesome. Yep, you check with your chopstick or fork. Goes in real easy. This would flake. This is done. It's ready to go. Take that off. Wow. All right, while we're waiting for our fish to steam, 
we're gonna quickly fry up our noodles. I put a little avocado oil, you could use vegetable oil, and some uh, sesame. All right, we're gonna put onions in there. And get these sauteed. That's the first thing we do. Want these to kind of like be separated evenly through the noodles. And you don't want to burn these, you want to get them just kind of golden brown. I got this on a high heat, which is typical. I would prefer to do this with a wok over fire. We don't have that, so the next best option is high heat with a cast iron pan. A normal pan will be fine, but this, this is best. And then we're gonna put in some very thinly chopped garlic for flavor. Ginger would be great at this point if you had it. I thought I had ginger, I don't have ginger. We make do without it, it's gonna be just, just fine. So we're gonna keep moving that all the time. You don't want anything to get burned. So just like you're in a walk, you're just gonna move it around all the time. So nothing gets burned, but it cooks very quickly. We put our noodles in. Also, you take the MSG flavor of that awesome shrimp. This is from the packet from these noodles, your ramen noodles. This is going to help loosen everything up and make sure there's just not too, you know, nothing stuck together. My soy sauce is not overpowering. It kind of gets spread around. You're going to get that nice, lovely shrimp flavor from that shrimp ramen noodle spread around in there. Cantonese flavor, you don't overpower anything. It's all about simplicity. The simple natural flavors thing. So yeah, we want flavor, but we don't want to overpower it. Again, we're gonna have some really awesome flavor from the sauce that we're gonna put over that fish. It's gonna flavor, flavor this up all the more. Add that. All right, we're gonna take that fish and add it directly over our rice at this point. We're gonna discard those onions that we uh, Steamed up, we're gonna put the fresh ones there, and now you're gonna put your freshly thin sliced ginger over top as well, which I didn't have, but definitely make sure you have that. And then we're gonna quickly go over to the stove top and get some oil piping hot. I have avocado oil, sesame oil. You could use peanut oil or coconut oil in this recipe. Now this is the magic. We got hua jiao, our Sichuan flower pepper. Green ones are better, I had red ones. But this gives like a hoppy, kind of citrusy aroma with like this kind of numbing pop rock thing in your mouth. It's, it's very, very good. If you haven't had it, I recommend you try this. You take that hot Once oil, it's smoking hot, right over you're the gonna top put it over the fish. fish. With some brown sugar, you're gonna take some dark soy sauce and some regular soy sauce. So we got our light soy sauce, brown sugar, and I'm gonna put some dark soy sauce. Take our chopsticks. So you can use a fork, but chopsticks is a way to stir things in China, so we're gonna do this authentically. Just gonna stir that all up. Want that brown sugar to mix in with all that Dark soy sauce, brown soy, uh, regular soy sauce and dark soy sauce with brown sugar. Oh yeah. We're just gonna pour that over our fish like this. Bam. That's it. That is all there is to it. This dish is absolutely insanely good. If anything, I would say do twice or triple the amount of oil that I did. I'm telling you, this is an incredible, incredible, incredible way to eat fish. So I'm going to dig right in. I take a big piece of fish, I dip that in the soy sauce. Make sure you don't get any bones. Mm. Unbelievable. It's so stinking good. Great aroma, great flavor. Adds a numbingness to your mouth. It's super addictive. you got to try this. And uh, the head, yeah. Pretty creepy, right? For us Americans, look at this huge, like, scallop. 
textured meat in the cheek. My favorite part of the fish right here. So I did a few things to this dish that's unusual. I took a dish that's super, super authentic and good and I did three things that are out of the norm. The noodles on the bottom, that's not normal. But the flavor of the sauce that goes in this dish is so good. I'm like this would go killer with noodles. I've already tried it. It's the noodles are really, really good. Seriously, noodles are ridiculous. I added some not just brown sugar but white sugar with the light soy sauce and the dark soy sauce. Never heard anyone doing this, but man, this set this dish on fire. Wasabi. Add the wasabi to the soy sauce mix. You have my chopsticks to stir it all up. Insane. If anything, I would add even more of the wasabi. I just took one of the best dishes I've ever had. Maybe even better. Follow my recipe and put a bunch of wasabi. If you don't mind this, this, the big kick of spice, I'm telling you the flavor is insane. This is incredible. I hope you like this. I have so many more recipes I want to share with you. Sweet and sour fish, baked fish, grilled fish, a lot of other steamed things. So many recipes that you can learn from me here at Dayfish84. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. And until next time, as always, God bless, and I'll see you on the next one. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I didn't get that camera back. <laughs> I actually lost a rod recently in a similar way. But you know, I've been, this video was done over a year ago. I've had a lot of bloopers this last year as I've been filming and doing YouTube. It reminds me a lot of life, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to how life is full of bloopers. For me, this has been a season where, well, I've gone through some gut-wrenching difficulties, and it literally took a tragedy to get me to do what I'm doing here with YouTube. But I'm thankful for where we're at. I wouldn't want to relive those things, but I'm excited about this journey we're on together. This is only the beginning for YouTube. And as a way of saying thank you to those who are still watching, here's a handful of pictures from the many years that I lived in China. They're beautiful and priceless to me. I hope you enjoy these. Until next time, Nima Nepungyo, Hui Tojie. Means, my good friends, I'll see you next time.